Hey, you 11s. Thanks for coming along. I've got eight people waiting already. Wow, you guys are keen. Love it. Let's see how long it takes me to get the uh, the register all done. Everyone say hi on the chat, folks. Do, ba do, do, do. Let's see how long it takes me to get the register done. Okay, let's see who's in. Anch, first in the room. Anch, you've become a full chemistry nerd. You know that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, amazing. I do love that. Makes me happy. And do you know what? I feel like you are such a great example of someone who I have managed to convert. And I love that, Ant. Makes me proper happy. Oh, hey, hey, Minwee. Hey, Liz. Hey, Harry. Hey, Sian. Nice to see you all. Good morning, Michael. Morning, Kefren. Oh, look at that. Michael's in the house. Love it. Didney. Is that Russell? Russell, can you just put your normal name? <sighs> You love it. Uh, so who do we have? Mr. Duncan, I haven't done paper 2017. <laughs> uh, and do you know what? It really doesn't matter. Um, you know, me going through these with you, uh, the fact that you haven't done it before I've been through this really doesn't matter. What you can do is you can do it retrospectively of the webinar. Um, and because in reality, this is this is me trying to get you guys to do some to just to be able to look through exam questions and be able to identify areas that you might be struggling with and it i'm doing it also because i'm very aware now that it looks like the exams are now really cancelled for good done dusted you know i'm very aware that i've got so many of you now who are going to be taking a level chemistry whether that's a bskl or not i've got so many of you taking it which for me is like the best thing ever i'm like yes it's a winner um, and I'm, I'm just, I, I honestly believe that me giving this time to you guys to go through papers will be a massive, massive benefit for you when you start on A-level. What I'm going to start doing as well is start to incorporate a little bit more of this translation to the A-level section. I'm going to try and run, run my best to be able to show you where that's heading. Yeah, it means that I'll probably slow down in my exam review, but it, it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sure that everything is, it has been gone over and you've made sure that you've identified all those areas that you can improve on. Uh, I've got Minwee, do we have Elijah? I haven't seen Elijah yet. Have, have I seen, no one's seen Tom yet either. I've got Meryl, I've got Harry. Have I got Aisha? Has anyone seen Aisha? No, haven't seen her yet. Got Sian, got Marella, got Julian, got Marcellus. Uh, do we have Ashy Potato? Haven't seen Ashy Potato yet. Uh, got Catherine, got Russell, got Emmelyn, got a Liz, doing well. Has anyone seen Ira? Anyone seen Ira? Do 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 do. Anyone seen Ira yet? Isha's in the house. Love it. There's Tom. Good morning. Love it. There's Isha and Tom. Excellent. Fab. Doing well. Has anyone seen Audrey? Anyone seen Audrey? Or Elijah? Tom, text Elijah. Tell him to get out of bed. <laughs> uh, I'm missing Audrey. I'm missing Elijah. I'm missing uh, Aisha. I'm missing Hibber. Hibber. I'm missing MJ, I'm missing Ira, and that's it. So I'm still missing a few. So as I said, folks, oh, there's Aisha, amazing. There we go, got her, amazing. Uh, does anyone know where Audrey is? I don't know if anybody's in contract with Audrey. I know that she tends to have problems with her internet. It'd be definitely good if somebody could text them, maybe, just to ask. Uh, Eliz, I text MJ and Ira. Ah, oh, Eliz, you are a star. Thank you. Uh, Hibber's, of course, still missing as well. Anyone seen Hibber? But yeah, that's absolutely fine. I, I'm happy to start now, to be fair. Can, can. Um, do you want to see my T-shirt today, folks? Science! Amazing. That's all I've got. <laughs> oh, amazing. Right. So I'll keep an eye on the chat. 
and I'll uh, I'll mark them as missing for now. It's quite unusual for them to be missing. They're usually here, uh, but I'll mark them as missing, and then I'll update. I'll keep my uh, I'll keep my register open uh, so I can then update it if they make an appearance. I think that sounds reasonable, right? So, guys, today let's uh, share screen. Do 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 do. do, do. Mm, mm, there we go. Oh, there's Hibber in the house. Hibber, Hibber. There's where's Hibber? There she is. Hibber's in the house. Amazing. Save. Thanks, Hibber. Thanks for coming. Only five minutes late, you know, stumbling into lesson. <laughs> okay, right, folks. Let's crack on. So today we are looking through the. Uh, let's get myself all sorted. Uh, today we are looking through the June 2017 regional paper. Yeah, regional paper. Yeah, the CR one. Uh, oh, there's there's MJ. Mark MJ is in. There's MJ. There we go. Ashy potato. There we go. Ah, uh, there we go. Hide that before I press it with my right with my hand. Right. Okay. So, periodic table, of course, is attached on the first page. Okay, right. Let's work through it, folks. Okay, bromine is an element in group one periodic table, nastiest element on my entire table. Did you know that? Yeah, bromine. It's one that I will never have in my collection. Rather scary stuff. Yeah, uh, there's Elijah. Thanks for coming, Elijah. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, right, there we go. So, um, bromine, of course, is, is actually, it's really nice to mention bromine, really important element, because there's only two liquids on my entire periodic table, and that is one of them, and you guys have to know that. It is important, it is important to recognize our two liquids. Bromine and mercury are my only two liquids. All the rest of them, yeah, there's my zigzaggy line. All the rest of these are solids, yeah. And then there's a whole load more solids in here. Yeah, I'm just, it's actually easier for me to, it's actually easier for me to do that. Check that out. Yeah, all of these guys here are gases. Yeah, and then everybody else, all of these are solids. So most of them are, which is quite nice. Yeah, and then it's asking for the formulae. Uh, for the molecule of bromine, of course, that's Br2. Nice and easy. Color, brown as a liquid, brown gas, but orange in solution. I like it. So what are, uh, which of these is the process that causes the gas to fill the jar? Right, okay. So that's actually really interesting, isn't it? Because there are two stages in this. Yeah, there's this process, yeah, which is evaporation. But evaporation's not the one that causes it to fill the jar. It's the one that causes the gas to be in the jar in it at, at the beginning. But the one that causes the gas jar to fill, yeah, is gonna be is gonna be diffusion. That's gonna be B. Yeah, evaporation doesn't cause it to fill. Yeah, the process of diffusion causes it to fill. Quite a clever question that, because lots of students will choose C. Yeah. Ah, oh, I was made an appearance. I hope you guys you realize how nice I am. I'm marking you guys as in rather than late. It's lucky that none of the SLT watch any of my videos. <laughs> Explain using particle theory the observations seen in the gas jar. Right, now that's quite clever because it's two marks, which means it's very few, but we've actually got to give two, two observations here, don't we? The first one is that um, it's evaporating, yeah? So stage one, uh, the brown liquid, Bromine liquid liquid becomes becomes gas becomes gaseous. Like that one, like that word. Yeah. Uh, Sian, is there like a pattern you see of boiling points on the periodic table? Um, there are patterns. Yes, you have to be quite careful with the patterns. And the, the answer is, of course, there is. Sian, it's interesting. All of the gases are in the top right hand corner. Of course. Of course, they're in all in the top right-hand corner. Yeah, the reason being, Sian, oh, you've asked such a lovely question. I'm going to, do you know what? Pause the, pause the thing. Let's, 
let's chat about my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Yeah, let's chat about my periodic table. I love my table. My table makes me so happy. I'm such a nerd. I'm like uber nerd. Yeah, so Sian, so you, you cover a little bit of this at GCSE, but not a huge amount. Yeah, you cover, but you do cover a bit of it. It's not gonna let me erase that now. So what you're asking is what's called periodicity. And this is part of unit one in AS, periodicity. This is the study, uh, the study of, study of trends, trends in the P table. Yeah. So, and yes, there are loads, the period, you have no idea yet, Sian, how amazing this thing is. It gives me goosebumps talking about it. I've been teaching A-level chemistry for 15 years, and I still find new things about it. And it, it literally gives me goosebumps to talk about it. Like, let's not even go into the history and how amazing the history is and the amazing, incredible scientists that, that discovered it. But the table is amazing. So one of the things that you, you, you guys learn straight off the bat, I'm going to try and color code my steps here. I've never actually done this kind of proper, like, like this kind of interim discussion. So you guys pick up this red thing here at key stage three. You, this is the first thing you learn. These are the metals, yeah, and these are the non-metals. Yeah, but then what you do also realize is, in fact, there's a whole load of other ones that are kind of have issues here. Silicon, arsenic, selenium, tellurium, yeah, um, antinomy, yeah, antinomy, germanium. Um, these guys, probably polonium as well, probably, maybe even astatine, but of course, they're, they, they, they're so rare, you can't really do anything about it. But these guys here are metalloids, ones that have bizarre mixtures of properties between metals and non-metals. You never even learn about those at A-level, annoyingly. But here's the next thing that you pick up. You then pick up the fact that the atoms, there are trends in the table. There are trends in the table across a period. So there are trends across a period. Oops, Mr. Letter. Across a period. And also, of course, you also get down a group yeah so you learn each of down a group so you get to learn all of these really cool kind of properties and then we can then discuss what those properties are um dub up redox i don't know dub up i'm not entirely sure which one who dub up is not that it matters but redox I don't, I'm, I'm wondering why you posted that on the chat i'm curious um but one of the things that you talk about is you've talked you've just mentioned their states of matter yeah, so one of the trends that you have to learn in A-level is period three, yeah? Period three has an amazing set of properties. This is one that you focus on a lot, period three. So number one, there's some really cool properties like, what is redox? I saw it in a previous video. Uh, redox stands for reduction and oxidation. It is a reaction where both happen simultaneously, dub up. Um, I'm happy, if you want to have a look at my previous webinars on redox, please help yourself. Um, if you want me to do another one on it and you've got some specific questions, send me an email, happy to do it. Um, period three, so number one, the atoms, so we get sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Yes, I am that nerdy. Will you make a video on it? Yeah, I've actually already done one, Dub Up. Um, if you, if you go through my channel, you'll probably find a Redox video there. It would actually be from... I think I've done a GCSE one, but I'm not 100% sure. But of course, I'm happy to do one if I haven't. Um, so the first thing to note here, folks, is that from GCSE, every single one of you would recognize that they all have three shells. Now, what you would then expect is because because they've all got three shells. Yeah, I'm sorry that they all. Yeah, I'm, I, I, if I do this in class, I use an image rather than drawing it. But we also then look at the number. We get element number 11, number 12, number 13, number 14, number 15, number 16, number 17, and number 18. And then you, the mass is increased, 23, 24, 27, 28, 31. Uh, silicon, no, silicon's 30, I believe. Silicon 30, no, 28, might be 28. I think it's 28. Never use silicon very often. Um, way to is dub up. Don't know, doesn't matter. It's nice to have them join in the class. Sulfur, 32, chlorine, 35.5, and argon, 40. Um, 
So what you'd expect, what lots of students expect to happen here is that the size of the atoms would actually increase. That would they, that's what they would expect, Sian. But in fact, this is not the case. It's actually the exact opposite. The atoms actually shrink in size as you move across. The reason being is they have, we, we realize that an atom's size is measured from the nucleus, where the positive protons are, to the outermost electrons. Well, if you've got three shells, you would expect them all to be exactly the same size. I love how you know all the numbers. Cyan, I, I know, it's sad, right? You can check me on silicon, please. Wouldn't mind if you checked me on silicon. It gets smaller? Exactly, it gets smaller. The reason being is you would expect them to get larger based on the fact that the numbers are increasing, but the numbers are only part of the nucleus. Whereas in reality, we realize it's based on where the electrons are. The, the atom size is measured from the, 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 the nucleus to the outermost electrons. That's how we measure an atom size. Exactly. And as we move across, if you look at an example of sodium, sodium has 11 protons at the center, but it then has three shells. Yeah, and it's only got one electron in the outer, but it has two here and eight here. Well, what you realize is all of these electrons, yet yeah, this outermost electron has got 11 protons pulling it in. But eight, 10 of the electrons are being shielded by shells beneath. If you then look at magnesium, magnesium has 12 protons in the center and then still three shells, still two and eight underneath. But the two electrons now in its outer are feeling a pull from more protons. The shielding is the same, but the number of protons increases. So you have an, what's called an overall effective nuclear charge. Um, I am dub up. Amazing. That, that, that well done dub up. You, you really clarified that for me. So it's kind of cool that you then get this idea of the atoms shrinking inside instead of growing. You now asked about melting point. Now, melting point's a fascinating one because you can actually graph this. If we go from sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, what you actually notice is that the melting point of sodium is, let me go from, let's go from, um, uh, this is actually quite tricky, this, minus 200 to plus 200. Yeah, no, more than that. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be a horrible graph actually. Sorry guys, to plus 2000, yeah? So sodium has a boiling point. Now that's actually quite tricky for me to graph, isn't it? Yeah, because zero is gonna, if uh, that's 2200, that's gonna be 1100. So that means this is gonna be something, zero is gonna be about here, yeah? So sodium has a melting point. So that means that if zero is about there, no, it's probably a bit lower than that actually. Maybe, I don't know, yeah, something like that, because that'd be 200. And then 10, 10 of those would be a bit lower than that. Let's put it a bit lower to about here, put zero in here. Uh, let's just make that the thousand. Let's move that down to make it easy for me to plot this. Yeah, sodium has a melting point of around about 200 degrees, which puts it about here. Magnesium now jumps to around about, you're very welcome. Magnesium now jumps to about 450, uh, it's higher than that. Uh, it's about 600. So that now jumps to around about 600. Then aluminum jumps to 660. So there's a small increase in aluminum. So there's a general trend increase. Uh, that's a bit too high, really. So is that one. Let's bring that down to here and here. So there is an increase. There's a general increase in the metals. And the reason for that is because you have to consider metallic bonding. In sodium, you've got a plus one cation and one electron in the delocalized C. Magnesium is a smaller ion now. It's an Mg2 plus ion, so it's got a two plus cation and two electrons in the delocalized C, increased uh, electrostatic attraction between, um, between the cations and the delocalized electrons. Aluminium is even smaller at a three plus cation with three electrons in the delocalized C per cation. Increase, so it's gonna increase across there. Then you have silicon. Silicon becomes giant covalent and that's 1650 degrees Celsius, an enormous jump. And that's because silicon is giant covalent. Yeah, so there's a, there's a there, and at this point people go, so hang on a minute, there isn't really a trend, is there? And I'm like, oh no, there are trends. They're just sections of trends. There's a trend in the metals, which is a general increase as you move across a period because you've got an increase in cations and an increased number of electrons in the delocalized C. You then jump to a giant covalent structure, which stands out, but then you drop down here into simple covalent molecules. So we now have phosphorus now plummets. Now this is where my numbers are gonna get a little bit blurry and I do apologize for this folks. You now have phosphorus. Now phosphorus travels in fours. F -f -f phosphorus equals f -f -f fours. Yeah, and that that uh, has a melting point of phosphorus around about 100 degrees Celsius, I do believe. Uh, is that right? Yeah, about that. Yeah, it's about 100 degrees, 60, 70, 80 degrees, somewhere like that. So that's down here. So you get this huge drop. 
And then what happens? You then get to sulfur. Now, sulfur goes around in eights, S8. They're actually called sulfur crowns. Like the way I always remember that, folks, is because if you write a letter S for sulfur, if you write another little baby S and then continue it all the way around, you get your eight. That's how I remember that. Uh, did you get your calculator, Dr. Sarkov? Lol, yeah, I remember that trying to barter for things. So there's a slight increase in that one there because the weak intermolecular forces, this is this is an increase here because the WIMPs, uh, you're not allowed to say that at A level, by the way, WIMPs disappears, but you can use them now. The weak intermolecular forces increase because the molecule is larger. Um, the next one is chlorine then travels around in pairs. The molecule shrinks in size. It drops to about minus 60. So it drops down to here. And then argon is a single atom dropping down to minus 110. So you, there are trends in this. There's a general, there's a, a kind of a general trend of decrease here as the molecules get to but sulfur obviously bucks that trend. Trend in the metals and the giant covalent stands out. So you can plot all these graphs. The next thing you can do, of course, is look at them down the groups. Now that's far more interesting. But now you ask, you're wondering why that all the gases were over here. This is because we drop into simple atoms and molecules at this point. We've got nitrogen traveling around as N2, oxygen as O2, fluorine as F2, yeah? And then we get single atoms here, atom, atom. So these are all got very low boiling points, but there's a trend in them as well. As you move down, the atoms get larger as you add more shells. If the atoms are getting larger, then we're gonna be stronger, weak into molecular forces. So the boiling point increases in a rather lovely steady trend. Yeah, it actually does like this. There you go, it does that. The boiling points and melting points of the, of the um of the noble gases it's not quite that straight actually but it's nearly that uh it's it slightly curves off as they get really big the bottom ones are messy but then what you do is there's trends of course in group seven because these are cl2 br2 and i2 and these are an at2 but you never talk about it because it's radioactive and has the doesn't it really exist it's only two grams on the whole planet but there's a beautiful trend in these and because these are molecules there are weakened molecular forces between the between the molecules so they all have low boiling points when you get over to this side of the table, yeah, they start gaining metallic bonding, which means their melting point increases. Would the graph um, differ, look, uh, uh, oh, hang on a sec. Would the graph for different periods look similar in shape? Oh, if we ignore the transition metals. Oh, what a question, Cian. Holy, okay. Oh, you've pushed me way outside my comfort zone now. No, oh, no. Right, let's do period two. Eek. This gets a bit more complicated, Cian. We've got lithium. Uh, ah, 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 missed one. Yeah, no, 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 I haven't. Lithium, beryllium, boron. I said boron right there. Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. I haven't... Have I ever drawn this graph? Oh, don't know. It's going to need to be really low. Minus 200, 2,000. No, 4,000. Oh, that becomes really messy. 4,000 up here. I'm going to mark that as 2,000 anyway. Yeah. Uh, sorry about this, folks. This is going to become really messy. This is Sian's fault. Blame Sian. I don't really care, though. It's fine. I like this. This is this is, this is, this is my, this is the fun stuff for me. Right. Let's graph it. Oop, no, no sorry needed, Sian. I love it. I always love being questioned about my stuff. Uh, so, okay. Now, by the way, I don't know all of these melting points and boiling points. I'm going to have to try and predict them based on my understanding of the chemistry. Do you want to go back to the paper? No, not really. This is far more interesting. So lithium is a metal. Now, lithium, of course, is in the same group as sodium, but it's smaller. What that means is it has the same one plus charge, but the same number of electrons in the delocalized sea, but it's smaller. It has a higher charge density, which means lithium has a higher boiling point than sodium. Sodium has a, has a uh, sorry, melting point. Sodium has a melting point of 98. That's what sodium's is. Sodium's, uh, I made that too high. Sodium's is 98. Lithium's is 200. So now, of course, we make this zero and 200 is going to be like here. So lithium is 200. Now, this is where it becomes really messy because what now happens is you start getting some very awkward things. We would expect beryllium to be metallic. And if you look at the way I'm moving through this, you could argue that the, the, the line would go up here so that beryllium would be metallic, but beryllium actually has um, beryllium actually has some odd characteristics. It's actually, um, it, it's kind of like a mixture. Yeah, it shows some giant covalent character. Its melting point's much, much, much higher than magnesium. It's in the thousands, I think probably around about one, two. Ooh, I'd love someone to check me on that. One, two is gonna be about here. Boron is genuinely giant covalent. 
Yeah, boron is in boron is in the non-metal side. It's the same as carbon. Uh, same giant covalence. So that now has a boiling melting point of about 15, probably. Carbon is diamond. Look at the trend. It's almost identical, just bigger. Diamond, of course, is giant covalent. That's giant covalent. This is giant covalent as well. This is metallic with covalent character. That's kind of giant covalent as well, to be fair. Kind of. It's got metallic properties. It, ha it has metallic as well. Then we get nitrogen drops into diatomic, plummets in boiling point. Woo, poof. Minus 170. No, hang on. Nitrogen. Minus 200. That is at minus 200. <laughs> That's funny. I'm going to go beyond my graph. So nitrogen is minus 200, minus 196, if you really want to know. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so cool. And it's cool, isn't it? You can check. Can you do me a favor? Can you check me on beryllium and boron? I am making those up. I'd love you to check some numbers for me. I would predict beryllium to be about 1,200, and I would predict boron to be about 16. That would kind of be the rough kind of numbers I'd predict. And then giant covalent diamond, of course, being the highest at 4,000. Minus 196 for, or 198, I can't remember, one of those two. 196 for nitrogen. Now, there's a slight increase to oxygen at 180. Minus 180, so 196 there. Then a slight increase to minus 180. Yeah, tiny increase to oxygen. The reason being is the molecule has more electrons. Therefore, the molecule is slightly larger. Um, even though, and that's actually a really awkward one because the actual molecules, the atoms themselves are smaller, so the bond is shorter, but it has more electrons. So it's got a very slight increase in boiling point. Fluorine is so, fluorine is awkward. And you're going to love this, Sian. So this is nitrogen. Here's nitrogen linked together. Yeah, then we get oxygen. Now, oxygen is slightly smaller than nitrogen. Um, this has a triple bond, of course. Yeah, this one has a triple bond. Doing dot and cross, great GCSE. Yeah, and then oxygen has a double bond. Great GCSE again. Yeah, but the molecule is slightly smaller. We, we realize that uh, the molecule is smaller. So you expect that actually the boiling point. Uh, uh, I'm on the phone. I can't exit YouTube. Oh, okay. Uh, Meryl, help. Like it. Um, so this one's minus 196, give or take, and this one's minus 180, take, take or leave it. So this one, that, the reason being is because uh, that molecule has actually got more electrons in it. Yeah, nitrogen is, nitrogen is element number seven, so the molecule has N2. Yeah, I'll do that. There's the element symbol. The formula is N2, so total number of electrons for that is 14. This now has oxygen, of course, is eight and 16, as O2, of course, it's then going to have 16 electrons, which gives it slightly stronger, weakened molecular forces. Then you get to fluorine. Now, fluorine, you'd expect to do the same, but it shrinks again. Fluorine is really interesting because fluorine is so tiny. The atoms are so small that what you start to get is between the molecules themselves, you start getting nuclear and nuclear repulsion. Fluorine is an oddity of the world. You would expect fluorine to have a slightly higher one but I'm pretty sure it drops to about minus 220. I think, I'm guessing, please check me on those. So you get a similar, that drops below the line and then neon's an atom, so it drops away. But, and look, you get almost identical trends. Wow, I wanna check that. I've never done that. I don't think I have ever, I'm gonna be all entirely wrong now, am I? Period two, holy moly. Period two, uh, boiling point? Boil, melting and boiling point trends. Images. I want the graph. There. No, that's not the right one. That's in the ah. Oh, that's group two. There. Right. Look at that. Yeah. Spot on. Ooh. Oh, they're in Kelvin. Why? I want it in Kelvin. Don't give me in Kelvin. It's rubbish. I want it in Celsius. Give me it in Celsius. Uh. No one. No one ever does this. Um. Just give me it in Celsius, please. I could convert it, but that's an effort now. Oh, there. There. There we go. Look at that. Pretty much spot. Wow. Born's higher than I thought. Born's much higher. Uh, that born's over two, two over 2,000. Brilliant's about 1,5 by the look. 1,6. Higher than I thought of, as well. Uh, but it's very similar. It gives you this really lovely bit. Yeah, cool cool question. That's the amp. Yeah. It, it's almost identical to what I've drawn, to be fair. I'm quite happy with that. Really happy. I wonder what fluorine is. I don't know what fluorine is. Um, do, 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 do. Right, let's go back. Sorry about this, folks. I've got like totally off path. 
is is it the same for the other periods too? Oh, you're making this hard for me. No, it's not. It becomes messy, Cian. Okay, so if we were gonna like, oh, it becomes messy. I've never done, uh, uh, wow. Could I do it, including transition metals? <gasps> I have no idea. Right, potassium, calcium, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, co iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, gallium, germanium, arsenic, arsenic, selenium, bromine, krypton? Holy moly. Is that correct? Did I just quote the entire of period four of my table? Is that in the correct order? Uh, uh, I'd be fine, but I, I think it is. Gallium, germanium, arsenic, selenium, bromine, krypton. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so what I can do is I can divide it here. Ooh, where's the line on the table? Where's the line? I need my line. Yeah, germanium and arsenic. Mr. Duncan, please. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Oh, but you made me want to do it now. Fine, Sian. I won't embarrass myself getting it right now. Okay. Bromine liquid becomes a gas. <laughs> Use particle theory. Due to particles having enough energy, enough energy to overcome, back to the paper, to overcome uh, weak intermolecular forces, weak intermolecular forces, wimps. You're not allowed to write down wimps, Tom. <laughs> uh, next one, bromine, bromine particles move from, from area of high concentration to low concentration due to diffusion. That is the definition of diffusion. Done. See, we know this. Well, I, I shouldn't do that. Right, ammonia. Ammonia is a gas and has an MR of 17. Relative molecular mass, it is RMM because it's covalent molecule. Hydrogen chloride, yeah, is also a gas, but that has an MR of 36.5. Yeah, relative molecular mass, it's much, much heavier. So the HCLs are gonna diffuse far slower due to their increased mass. The ammonia is gonna travel much quicker. There's the, the, white, um, the white smoke is gonna appear at C. Yeah, they're gonna ask you to explain it. Oh, no, I like it, wow, that was easy. Iron is a metal that has many uses. One problem with iron is that that can be a rust to explicit. Name two substances that may be present uh, in iron. Oh, oh, that must be present for iron to bust. Okay, water and oxygen, that's easy. Water, uh, I'm just, why am I writing and? Oh, water, oxygen. Yeah, it's nice now just to remind you guys, you must, at edXL, you must know that rust is iron three oxide. Yeah, got to know that. Next, there are four methods for preventing rusting. For a bicycle chain, you will oil because it's moving. You would scratch off paint. You would scratch off galvanizing. You would, uh, it's too, very expensive as well, but you'd scratch it. And coating it in plastic, you'd scratch that off too. Coating in plastic is like the same as painting. Painting is a type of plastic. Oh, stupid. Anyway, bridge, you'd paint all day long. We'd paint a bridge. Yeah, you wouldn't put oil on it, it'll get washed off in the rain. You wouldn't galvanize it, oh my goodness, to cover it in that much zinc. It's nice for me just to remind you guys, galvanizing means to cover in zinc. You've got to know that. Please make sure you do. Car body paint. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Next. That's interesting. Bridge and car, the same. Which of these metals is used to gal... There we go. Told you. Told you. Next. Right. Uh... Mixtures, yada, 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 to obtain sand from sand and water. Filtration. Boom. Filtration. 
We want the solid. Separate crude oil into its components. Fractional distillation. Fractis. Fractional distillation. Next, to obtain pure water from seawater. Fractional distillation at Excel, but they're going to want simple, aren't they? No, Anch, I would fight them for this. Ed Excel are idiots. That's fractional distillation. I don't care what they say. I need to check a mark scheme now immediately to obtain ethanol from ethanol and water. That can be simple for that if you like. But it's two liquids. It's fractional distillation again. I don't care what they say. It's rubbish. You could use some, you'd use fractis for that too. I don't care what they say. That's horrible. That is not fair. They're going to say that you allow you, they want simple for that. That is just disgusting. I want to see the mark scheme immediately. I don't trust you, Ed Excel. I don't trust you at all. What idiocy are you going to say? Galvanize a bridge, whatever. There we go. Simple distillation to obtain pure water. No, it's wrong. They're wrong. If they didn't put the word pure, I'd get, no, they're liars. That isn't, mm, no. Ignore them, year 11. Edexcel are morons. I would fight that. I would. It's practice, don't care. When a mixture of ethanol water is separated, two colors six with A and B. Ethanol contains a small amount of water. B is pure water. Describe the chemical test so that A contains water. Boom. Oh. Boiling point test. I know you literally told me you would fight them. Yeah, I, I would I would literally like go full Rocky Balboa on Edexcel. Honestly, no way. Edex on mm. sorry, let it go. Describe a chemical test so that A contains water. Isn't that fascinating? Boiling point. It would be impure. Yeah, you, that's how I do it. Describe it, but it says a chemical test. Describe a chemical test. You're gonna add a small amount, add, add uh, anhydrous, anhydrous copper sulfate. I wanna see if they get this, if they allow that. Would, would we get it wrong? Uh, on the original on the original marking, Ange, yes, you would. You'd get that wrong in an initial marking, but I would fight them tooth and nail for it. I'm sorry about that, but they would. They'd mark, they'd mark me wrong, and I'd just go, no, it's right. Uh, anyway, add anhydrous copper sulfate, and you'll see it turn blue. Uh, it's not spelt with a pH anymore, by the way. It, it is originally spelt with an F. Anhydrous copper sulfate turns blue. Now, can I just point out, that is so much more complicated than what Edexcel are even doing there. Anhydrous copper sulfate. There you go. It's a lie. Can I just point out that that is not correct chemistry? When you get to A2, in A2, we would say no. Yeah, it's not correct. Describe a physical test to produce its boiling point. Boil it. Boil, boil the water. Boil the water. Measure its temp it's temp it will read 100 degrees celsius that's the only i think i think that's the only melting point that you expected to actually know or boiling point in this case that you expected to know ethanol 78 it's always nice to remember that um anyway next um the periodic table can this development arranged in order of increasing atomic number what is meant by the term atomic the number of protons in the nucleus total number of protons in the nucleus of an atom the elements in the same have similar chemical properties. This is because the atoms have the same number of electrons in their outer energy, outer energy level. Right. Oh, I like this. Melting point structure. Giant. All metals are giants, folks. But acid basic acid base characteristics. Yeah, we know that the metals are basic. Yeah. So that there is going to be basic. Metals are basic. Um, Non-metals are acidic, yeah? Carbon, melting point, very high. Highest. Structure, giant. I love how they just want you to say giant. Yeah, giant or molecular. Uh, Acid-base characteristics, none, neither. Uh, we can say acidic, it is, it is acidic, sure. It's not, 
It has neither. Carbon as a solid does not show any, but when you react it with oxygen, it'll form carbon dioxide, which does so acidic. Sorry, do you know what? And that's not fair of its oxide. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. So that is CO2 and that is slightly acidic. pH 6.3, give or take. Nitrogen. Yeah. Uh, melting point is low. Yeah. Structure, molecular. Molecular. Oxide, acidic. Of course, NO2. Everyone knows that that causes acid rain. This is causing global warming, by the way, not acid rain. Not acid rain. It's not acidic enough to cause it, but that is. Yeah, nitrogen dioxide has a pH of around about ugh, four and a half. That makes a big difference. Yeah, and then fluorine, low molecular acidic. You never see them, though. Yeah, FO2. You never see fluorine oxides, but they are acidic. They would be. You just never see them because you never see fluorine. Next. Do, 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 do. Using the burette, using a burette would be an improvement only if another change is made to the method. Okay, this method is given 0 0 0.5 grams of magnesium ribbon into the conical flask. Use a measuring cylinder to add 50 cent dilute acid and then replace the blunt. Record the total volume of gas collected every 20 seconds for two minutes. Repeat the method. They're saying because the magnesium ribbon is, is done to one decibel place, right? You need to experiment. Keep the temperature the same with magnesium in excess. Oh, magnesium is in excess. S using a burette would improve only if another change is made to the method. State the other change needed to the method. Oh, fascinating. So hang on. We're saying that we're going to measure the acid more accurately. Uh, we're going to, oh, hang on a minute. I mean, the, the measurement on the, on the, you'd have to use a gas syringe. Use gas syringe. That's an interesting question, though. Uh, the reason being is that the, 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 the readings on this are so rubbish. Yeah, the readings on this are so much. So when the water level gets there, it's just gonna it's gonna make no difference if you measure it out more accurately. Yeah, the error is so great on the readings of the measuring cylinder collecting the gas that having a more accurate yeah syringe is an e on the end, doesn't it? I want to see the mark scheme. State the advantage of using a bure state the advantage of using the burette. Measure smaller changes. Measure. Uh, Measure solution um, with more accuracy. More accurately. You can measure smaller changes. Mm. Wanna see the mark scheme for that? That's really interesting. More accurately. Wanna see that? Hey at Excel, what rubbish are you gonna tell me now? Uh, measure boiling point, that's fine. Protons, shells, yada 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 yada. Add acid before the magnesium. A burette has a better resolution than a measuring cylinder. Huh. Add acid before the magnesium. Fascinating. Place 0 0.5 using a measuring cylinder. Oh. That is hard. Wow, guys. I would never have got that. Let me explain that to you, because if we were going to use, I'm suddenly realizing, I don't know what time this lesson finishes. It must be soon. Uh, what time does this lesson finish? Blimey, like really soon, right? Uh, oh, 10 minutes. It's okay. Guys, this is really clever. If you've got a conical flask and you use, if you use a measuring cylinder, yeah, a measuring cylinder to add in your fluid. Would everyone agree that you'll be able, using a measuring cylinder, you could add the, add the solution really quick? Yeah, add quick. You add it quickly and then seal it to collect the gas. Agreed? Well, everyone here in this room has, has learned how to use a burette. Yeah? So, if you use a burette, would everyone agree? Does everyone remember how long it took them to drain the burette at the end? Um, 
drain your burette at the end of a practical when you, did, you had to get rid of the excess acid. It takes, it takes maybe one, it takes about a minute, yeah? It takes about a minute to drain. So can you imagine if you had your magnesium ribbon, if you had your magnesium ribbon there and you added it using a burette, which takes one minute to add the total volume, to add the total vol, how much of the reaction had already been gone before you could collect your gas. I would never have got that in a month of Sundays. That's hard. Wow. Guys, it's it's not a problem. I'm, do you know what? That's the kind of thing where I'm like, wow, really clever. You know, 15 years available teaching and I can't do that. It's fine. Uh, measure solutions more accurately. I like it. Does it actually say ignore accuracy? Does it say uh, allow greater accuracy? There you go. No, precision is not correct. It's not the same thing as accuracy, but I just don't know the difference between them. Plot the graph. Wait, guys, do you know what? Since it's plotting a graph, I'm I'm going to leave this here. Uh, I may as well. I'm going to end the lesson slightly early. I may as well. There's no point in starting another question. I've only got n uh, nine minutes left of the lesson, and plotting the graph on this thing is a nightmare. So I'm going to come back to here. Right, guys. Um, I'm sorry that I got distracted, but as I said, U11, I know that you're going to be starting A-level content in two weeks. Yeah, and I want you guys to be as well prepared for this as possible. Have a go at doing the rest of this paper one, and I'll continue doing it um, on our in our next lesson. I think it's Monday. Um, but I will leave you be. Go and have a lovely weekend, guys. No, uh, Sian, I'm really glad that you did distract me. You know, in some ways, I, I should be, I should be start, I should be preparing you for, for A level. That's what I should be doing. Um, I was worried I got it wrong uh, for like half the lesson. Oh, Mr. Duncan looks, Mr. Duncan looks epic. To be TBF, he wouldn't be distracted. <laughs> he would be. I would have been distracted either way. I always get distracted. But guys, as I said, don't don't. I, I should be preparing you guys for A level now. Um, I will, guys. I'll leave you be. Go and have a nice weekend, and I'll see you in lesson next week. See you later, guys. It's good to see you. Be safe.